we're gonna get this thing to take off a land by itself. 50, 40, 30, 20, retard, retard. Without it calling me a retard. But if you think I'm gonna experiment auto takeoffs and landings with the Xhawk that has taken me over a year to perfect, you are wrong. And that's where this airplane comes into play. Our guinea pig, Jenny, the Volantex Ranger 2400. I set up the cube ore engine here about a month ago after the Xhawk crashed and flew it around a bit, mostly to cheer me up for being such a terrible aircraft engineer. But today, it's gonna do more than just put smiles on my face. It's gonna crash, I mean, land all by itself. How, you might ask? I'm equipping it with the Matexis F405 wing version two, a much more affordable autopilot than the cube orange. The autopilot will be fully equipped with a GPS, airspeed sensor, and a LiDAR sensor that will measure the exact distance the aircraft is from the ground. Let's get to it. The first thing I had to do was flash the autopilot firmware, and it's not as straightforward as you may think. Thanks to the YouTube channel, Painless360, I was able to get this thing up and running. I highly recommend watching his channel if you need help configuring pretty much anything RC related. The airspeed sensors have a special seat in hell for me. Even in the Exoc, I spent hours trying to figure out why it wouldn't initialize. I ordered a new one from a different manufacturer and it got destroyed here. Ordered another one from the same manufacturer thinking the bad juju was gone. Same problem. But I finally figured it out. It was the little Pico connectors that weren't making solid contact on the pins on the sensor. I sent the wiring to its dedicated spot and tried a different set of wires, only to come to the same issue. Sent them to visit their friends and decided to make it permanent. I just soldered the cables right onto the sensor itself. Try not making contact now, huh? Once I climbed out of that hole, everything was surprisingly smooth sailing. I drilled a few holes to mount the FPV transmitter. Then I 3D printed a small piece to mount the antenna and I'm using the AKK Ultimate 5.8 GHz analog FPV video system with a Foxier Predator camera. I decided not to use the Walksnail system because I didn't want to be swapping the camera and transmitter every time I switched planes. And I had this analog system laying around, so I figured I'd put it to good use. I apologize in advance for the 1980 FPV footage. I even got the analog video transmitter to communicate with the autopilot so I can control its power output remotely. You see, video transmitters get extremely hot and therefore needs airflow to cool it down. Hence why I mounted it outside for maximum cooling. But the problem persists when you power it all up on the ground and are waiting for the GPS to acquire a signal or for yourself to find the courage to fly. They can easily overheat in scenarios like this. So with smart audio, you can control it with Alexa or Google Home. What? That's, that's not how that works? I guess you actually have to flip a switch on your transmitter to control it. I set it up so that when I arm the aircraft, it'll increase the transmitter power for flight. For the LiDAR sensor, I also 3D printed a mount and cut a small hole through the fuselage to run the wires. This sensor is going to work very much like a radar altimeter in a real airplane. It will tell us exactly how high the aircraft is above the ground. Remember that Airbus calling the pilots retards? The altitudes callouts right before are based on the radar altimeter. It's a crucial component if we want to get the autopilot to land itself. All in all, I really enjoyed working with the F405 wing, especially because it uses standard DuPont pin connections, and those are easy to work with and make your own custom harnesses. And the connections don't suck. One thing I was not a fan of was soldering the 752 pins on the board. At least that's what it felt like. Don't judge my solder blobs, okay? At least wait for the plane to crash so we can all blame it on that. Anyways, got the camera mounted on a servo and then stuck it on the foam cover and we were ready to dance. This is actually required, okay? I'm calibrating the compass. 
I definitely wasn't dancing with the plane in the moonlight. And now, let's make it fly. The first thing we had to do was determine the aircraft stall speed in the landing configuration. To do this, I mounted a camera on the wing and taped a bunch of string to the upper surface of the wing. This should give us a visual representation of the aircraft stalling. I flew it up as high as I legally can and configured the flaps for landing. Then pulled the power back slowly and tried to maintain altitude. As the laminar flow above the wing begins to get turbulent, the aircraft was near a stall. And as soon as the strings went crazy, the aircraft was in a deep stall. And from that, I can determine at what speed the aircraft stalls. In this case, it seems to have stalled at about 20 knots. Once I got this information, I brought it back down for a manual landing and configured the autopilot some more. Then, it was time to build a flight plan for its first attempt at an auto takeoff and landing. Here you go, hands are off. So the autopilot is in full control of the aircraft now. It's going to do a downwind, a bit of a base, and come in for final and land itself. RF signal critical. That's crazy. That's pretty cool. That's insane. <laughs> so it obviously worked pretty well right off the bat, but I did fine tune some parameters and uh, took it up again and tried it a few more times. No hands. <laughs> yes, we locked the door. He zoomed in good? Okay, I'm zoomed in. Yeah, we locked the door. started to take off again. Hands are off. Okay. Hands are off? Yep. Landing glide slope, 13 degrees. That all went so much better than I expected. Stay tuned. The next one to do an auto landing is the x -Hawk. Like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.